church, we've, we've heard it said, according to Romans 8 and verse 19, we heard it said that creation eagerly awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. And there's always a temptation to keep saying that the time is coming. The time is coming. But I want you to understand that you have stepped into the time. You are right in the season of your manifestation. You are showing up as a son of God. The, the world has never ever seen such glory. They've never seen such power. They've never seen people who, who embody Christ himself and manifest Christ. But they will experience him through you. I'm hearing an announcement that people are drinking from the well of life that is you. I'm hearing an announcement that people are drinking of the wellspring of life that is you. I want you to open your mouth and say, thank you, Lord, that I've stepped into my time. That people are drinking of the wellspring of life that is me. Oh, they are drinking from me. I'm a life giver. I'm a life giving spirit. And in this season, I release Zoe. In this season, I walk and live according to the fullness of who you have made me, Lord. Come on, open your mouth and thank him. Thank you, Lord. In my family, they are drinking. In my community, they are drinking. In my church, they are drinking. My friends are drinking. My children are drinking. They are drinking. The nations are drinking. Governments are drinking. Governments are drinking. Of the will spring of life that is me. Oh, kingdoms are drinking. Of the wellspring of life that is me. Thank you, Jesus. It's important to know how to engage the word of God. When God speaks, you respond. When God speaks, you always respond. You don't sit and listen. And you respond with your mouth. Hallelujah. You know... We are in a training camp. It's not church as usual. You are being trained and equipped, equipped for the assignment that God has entrusted you with. You are the river that your community is waiting for. You are the river that your dead family has been waiting for. You are the river that the government has been waiting for. There are nations that are waiting your unveiling. Now, if you have not been trained... You will not be competent, not because you don't have the ability, but you have not been trained. I preached here some months ago, and I said there are things that these personal trainers, Bokai, are able to do. They have an endurance, a stamina. You know, if you watch them run five kilometers, 10 kilometers, fit, you're just confused. How are they doing it? It's because they've been training. So as a child of God, it's not that you don't have the ability to be a life giver, to be a river in the desert where there's dryness all around. There's an innate ability. There's the life of God in you. He has made you a life-giving spirit. He has made you a life giver. It's in you, but we are in a season of training. It's the training that's been missing. It's the training that was missing. Train yourself in godliness. Train yourself in the godly life. It's not an ordinary life. It's not an ordinary life. And if you don't train for it, you'll think it doesn't work. Or you'll think it works for some, but it doesn't work for you. And yet, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In fact, in John 20, 21, Jesus says, Even as the Father has sent me, so send I you. As the Father has said, the same way. So if he sent him out with power, he says, I've sent you out with power. He says the same way, the same way that the Father sent me, so send I you. 
Jesus walked the earth and was not molested or frustrated by anything that is normal. He was not subject to anything that was natural. That is your portion, child of God. You are not under any natural law. You are a life giver. You have been placed above. You are born from above. You are above all. All you need is training. If you train and exercise in godliness, it changes the results. Changes the, it doesn't change who you are. You were already victorious. You were already a victor, victor. But you were the type of victor that was not going to the gym. And when you don't go to the gym, you can't do what people who are using their bodies a certain way can do. It's not that you lack legs or muscle that can be developed. It's that you're not doing anything about your own. And other people are choosing to do something. So come on, I want you to say after me, I will exercise myself for the godly life. I will exercise myself for a life of dominion. I'm a champion for life. I am a winner. I am a success. I cannot be disadvantaged. I am victorious all the time because he leads me in a triumphal procession from victory to victory, from glory to glory, from strength to strength. I will not be bullied by demonic attacks. I awaken to reality. I'm above, I'm not beneath. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. I know what to do. There is an unction in me. I know what to do. I know how to do. I walk in the wisdom of God. I manifest the superiority of Christ in my situation. My finances reflect that he became poor, that I might become rich. My body manifests that by his stripes, I was healed. I will exercise myself in godliness so that the world will see the unveiling of the sons of God. And they will declare as they see me that there goes the son of God. Put your hands together and give him praise. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Let's be seated in the presence of God. Come on, tell the person sitting next to you, you're in a training camp. You see, this was simple instruction. Some of you just kept quiet. instruct. Nim instruct. Tell the person sitting next to you, you are at a training camp. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what the Holy Spirit just quickened in my heart to share. I'm going to share for a few minutes. We still have offering and announcements to do. But we're thankful to God that his word is coming to pass. He said to us, it won't be church as usual. He said he's changing things around. And we're excited for whatever he's doing and what he wants to do in our midst. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together for our worship team and our band? Let's thank them. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so eager to go straight to the word of God. But before I do, the word of God says to give honor where honor is due. I acknowledge and celebrate the leadership of this church. Uh, in particular, not just the, the deaconship of this church, but our assistant pastors, the Mashazis and the Lukeles. And above all, we give honor to our apostle, the founder and president of Sword and Spirit Ministries. Let's put our hands together for Apostle Begitwala. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the word that the Lord quickened in my heart is training for a godly life. I'm just so excited because I, I understand that our becoming has been delayed by our inability to train. And yet the word of God is very specific. You must train. It's not optional. I know, you know, I, I've been asked to go to the, I mean, I haven't only been asked, I've been instructed and I've, I have not passed you know, the test yet because I think I have options. So I refuse to go. But here, with this life, you're not going to get away with it. If you don't exercise, 
you live an ordinary life. And yet you and I were born for a supernatural life. We are high flyers. We are champions in this life. We are overcomers. We are so resilient that it's, it's unbelievable. You know how the Bible says we're well, like a reed. A reed can bend all the way back and you can think it's over. But it just bounces right back. That's you. That's the ability that God has placed on the inside of you. Situations come and you feel like they're bending you all the way down. You feel like, I don't know if I'm going to rise from this. There's an innate ability on the inside of you, child of God. You have what it takes to always bounce back. And you don't bounce back the same. You are even better and greater than you were before. The devil regrets the stress that he has put you through. The devil is miserable for the test that he has taken you through. Because you have been refined as gold. When gold goes through fire, the impurities go away. And it becomes even of a higher quality. That is the life of the child of God. We may pass through the waters. They fail to drown us. We may pass through the fires. They are not able to, to consume us. But rather they ignite us. They refine us. They purify us. They cause us to shine brighter. I don't know what storm you have been facing in your life but I am here to declare to you by the spirit of the Lord it's not over until God says so you are not a loser you are not disadvantaged you have what it takes to live on top of every circumstance of your life hear the word of the Lord greater is he that is in you than that situation that you are facing hear the word of the Lord you are the one who will remain standing after the storm has come and gone it will leave you standing i know that right now it looks like you know it's it, it's not going to end well for me it looks like it's not ending well but as you exercise yourself in godliness as you train you're going to discover that there's nothing like that you are a winner not some of the time all of the time come on say i'm a winner not some of the time but all of the time i'm victorious not some of the time but all of the time, I think it was about two weeks ago that uh, Pastor Nantlantla was leading prayer in the morning. And she said that she spoke about the season that we're in. She said, God is changing the status quo. He's changing how things are happening. And it's going to be such a, a fast change or turnaround. And then she said, how you will know is that speedily things that you have waited for for a long time will begin to happen almost suddenly and speedily. That's the word she spoke. Now, we're talking about training in godliness. When she spoke that word, I engaged with the word. As soon as she spoke it, I said, okay, Lord, what has taken long in my life? And the first thing was church property. I, that's what came into my heart. Church property, we've been waiting. We've been, one minute we have it, but it's not the right one. And I said, Lord, so that is the one I'm believing you for. I engage with a specific thing. The second one was our property in Eswatin. We've had property that has been laying dormant for quite a while now. That was just not bringing what it should be bringing to us. And I'm telling you, in less than a week, after she released that prophetic word, in less than a week, all of it happened. All of it happened. This is what I want you to know. I could have been there saying amen. When she was releasing the word, I could have said amen. Thank you, woman of God. That was so powerful. Nonsense. The child of God doesn't engage like that. You don't do that if you're a child of God. Amen. Is that what you're saying? Amen. That, that is how you engage. That is you worrying and actualizing what God has released by just saying amen. It's not enough. It's not enough. First Timothy 1.18, or is it 2 Timothy 1.18 in the King James, speaks about how according to the prophecies that have been released, you must now wage war. When a prophetic word is released, you take it by force. In Luke 1.45, the Bible says Mary, because she had hidden these things, there was a performance of what God had said. She first hid the things in her heart. In other words, she was careful to engage with the promises of God. She was careful to pay attention to what God had said. I mean, that was a ridiculous situation. She was told that she was going to be with child. And she was like, uh, I kind of know where children come from. 
How is that going to be? Because I know no man. And a word was released. The Holy Spirit shall overshadow you. I don't know how many of you here would be comforted by that word. But I know I wouldn't be. Because if you say the Holy Spirit will, be, will overshadow me, I'm now even more confused. Will he come? What's going to happen to me? But the Bible says she received the word by faith. Received it. And she hid these things in her heart. She chose to believe. Even though everything didn't make any sense. And in it, she didn't know. What does it mean to have the Holy Spirit overshadow you? You don't know. You've never seen it. You don't know. Most of us would have been stuck right there. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand. Yeah, God, Bazalwan. We don't understand. We don't walk by understanding. We don't have to understand. Our faith does not require understanding. We just choose to believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's only when we believe that we gain access to understanding. Understanding comes because you first chose to believe the word. So that word was released. And I engaged the word. I picked what I was going to stand in faith for. And I began to decree it and declare it and speak according to the word to agree with heaven in my life. And there was a manifestation. If you are training in godliness, learn to engage the word of God. Exercise the word of God. In Psalms 82, we know the scripture, but I want to read it. Please put it up. Psalms 82 from verse 5 to verse 7. I just, I want us to read it even though we know it. Because I want us to note something. I want us to note that we are born from above. We are above all. And yet it's possible to live a life that doesn't reflect that. I refuse in the name of Jesus. I refuse mediocrity. I refuse struggle. I refuse faithlessness. I refuse discouragement. I refuse all of it. I choose to agree with heaven. And I choose to walk according to what God already prepared for me. It will manifest in my life. Hallelujah. It says they know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of cause. Because what? They know not. So, number one, in your quest to exercise yourself in godliness, gain, gain knowledge. When they know not, they walk like ordinary men. They walk on in, in, under, I mean, in darkness because they don't know. The foundations of the earth are out of cause. Let's read verse 6. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. So they don't know that they are gods. They don't know that in that situation where you look dis like disadvantaged, you are actually the god of that situation. So they respond according to what they don't know. They don't talk like gods. I was a teacher, a Swatin, and we had a, a, a head teacher that I want to call wicked. A principal. Who was, who was not godly. And because he was not godly, he was a bully. But you see, I knew that I was a god. So that thing helps a lot. Because you can't be molested even by the, the, the boss. He still can't molest you if you know who you are. Amen. So you're sitting in a meeting, and he's talking all sorts of things that you know. That there's no weapon fashioned against me that can prosper. This is a weapon. And the Bible says, in judgment, I shall condemn the weapon. So even as, as the weapon is coming, I'm saying, weapon, hear the word of the Lord. In fact, not me. It's, that is not my portion. That's not going to happen to me. I remember him calling me because what would happen is in meetings, I would, he would say whatever he says. And I would say, no, sir, that's not possible. We will not be able to do that. So then he summoned me to his office privately to first try and manipulate me. The first thing he said to me was that, you are like all of us, you need bread on your table. I was like, bread? I need bread. I was young, now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous for, no, they are children begging for bread. I can't beg for bread. You can't talk about bread when you talk to me. You must find something else to talk about. Because as for me and bread, nah, I can't lack bread. Not my children, not my children's children. We just do not lack bread. So I, I, said, I said to him, as respectfully as I could master, I said, sir, 
my sustenance doesn't come from my salary. I, I wanted him to not be confused. If you remove the salary, I'll, I'll have bread. I don't, I don't have bread because I have a salary. If you remove all the salaries in my life, I'll still be eating. I'll eat well because God just chose to use the salary to provide the bread. But my provider is God. I'm not now looking at the salary as my provider. That's not where my provision comes from. My provision comes from the Father. That's why I don't have plans that have to do with money. My plans have nothing to do. You'll hear me say, in June, in June we're going to America. It's a true story, Bazalon. I'll be like, oh, in June we'll be in the States. We're going to do two retreats, um, you know, that are going to be empowered. If you try to use a calculator, you'll be like, they're going nowhere. These are busy talking, but they are not going. But then I'll be in that plane. And you'll be there confused. How did she land there? I believed and engaged. Engaged the word. I don't budget according to my pocket because then my life would end. Like, what? I just know that my father is my provider. So I'm like, okay, dad, that's what we're doing now, you know. That's what you're doing. Me and my father are one. So that's how we roll. All the time. My father and I. We're there doing the most. Sounds like, yo, we are the issue. No, it's reality. It's reality. I can't minimize it to accommodate your small faith. I can't reduce it in order to accommodate the fact that you choose to embrace unbelief. I live where money has nothing to do with my plans. Amen. Nothing whatsoever. And my life is bright. Oh, I'm shining all the days from glory to glory. Amen. Guess what? There are circumstances and situations that try to say to me, now you are not. Now it's bad. I don't listen to those. I don't give attention to those because those are lies. Ye are gods. All of you are children. So if you are a child of the Most High, you are a god. You are a ruler in this life. Let's read verse 7. Then he says, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. You are a god dying like a man. God forbid. I want you to say, God forbid. If you can, say, chineke. I refuse. You can't. You can't die like a mere man when you are a God. All you need to do is just go to the gym of the word of God. We're going to see how we do that. I said we gain what? Knowledge first. We believe him. We get the knowledge. And then we get understanding. Amen. I, I don't want to unpack that because, okay. So, let's look at... 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. It says, but refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself unto godliness. So this thing of you being at a training camp, it's not me being creative to bring a, a sensational sermon. It's the word of God. It says you must choose to move away from Old wives' fables. Those are just like fairy tales, okay? So you're moving away from all these things that then control how you think. And exercise yourself rather unto godliness. It's more profitable. There's more profit when you're exercising yourself in godliness. There's a reason why we're waking up and praying, Bazalan. It's not because we don't have other things to do. We know the benefits of praying, especially of praying in tongues. Mm. Thank you, Apostle, for praying for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I saw that some of us came here and we couldn't even engage with the word. You see, when, when, when the Lord summons you to come and drink, he's not summoning you so that he can now drink for you. He's not even summoning you to put the drink in your mouth. He's saying the drink is available. Come and drink. But who has the responsibility of drinking? I, I can't hear you. Who has the responsibility of drinking? You must drink. So you can't come here and just raise your hands. 
and wait for someone to put their hands on you. Really? You came just to have someone lay there. How many times have you done it and how has it helped you so far? How great is your life from that? You don't do that. You bring the hunger. And when you get here, you are telling God, you are declaring, you are muttering under your breath. If you don't have tongues, you still have English or Zulu or Kosa. There's something you are saying to your father. You are engaging. You are engaging. You don't, you don't sit complacently and think your life is going to change. There's nothing like that. You engage with the word of God. I, I just took you through a declaration now. The declaration that you are saying after me is all scripture is the word of God. I did not get that scripture into me by osmosis. I was intentional about sitting, studying the word of God and declaring it for my life before I came to stand to declare it in front of you. This that I'm doing is a byproduct of how I live my life every day. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of us want to shine when now there's an audience. It's not going to work like that. It's not going to work like that. You're not suddenly going to know scripture because we've given you a pulpit. There are people who feel like, if, you, if, if Papa Sassand would just let us share because we're loaded, why aren't you sharing at work? If you're loaded, there are streets full of human beings. I've not seen you standing by the corner telling people, releasing all that you are full of. Why must you be full when you are now here? Because if you are full, you must overflow everywhere you are. Release life. Like when you just come to a family meeting, let them know that your, 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 your things are going to change now. Because as we're talking about money, let them even feel like if we want to be foolish, let's have the, the meeting about budget without her. Because when she comes, she'll frustrate us. She'll be busy telling us that, no, but we have the money. We're okay. We can do it. Because you live there. You release what is it. The things that are molesting you, child of God, are only molesting you because you have not exercised yourself in godliness. You have not meditated on the word of God. You have not prayed. Prayer is important. Prayer causes us to see things correctly. As we pray, then what we see is the correct thing. Some of you are seeing that you are getting divorced, that your husband is divorcing you, that your wife is divorced. It's not even true. In reality, it's not even true. But look at you. You are depressed. In fact, you are now on antidepressants because of something that's not true. What if you knew that it was a lie? What if you knew the truth? As, he, as he's busy saying that, I'll divorce you, you say, no, you won't. That's, that's our life. There was a time that divorce was on my mouth. And I'm, I'm going to quickly shift the blame to my parents. <laughs> my parents got divorced. And because I was in that space, my mind was also tuned. I don't know how to explain it, but conditioned to divorce. I just thought, if things don't work, I'm going to get a divorce. It was as simple as that. From the day I got married, I was waiting for the fire to start, so I go. So every little fight was, I'll divorce you. I'll divorce you. And he would say, no, you won't. That's sleeping in the midst of a storm. He didn't try to force me not to divorce him. He simply declared an established reality. He was seeing from somewhere, and he was refusing to acknowledge what he was seeing from somewhere else. Some of us just don't want to get in touch with reality. What's happening in reality? Are you fired? Are you jobless in reality? So why are you panicking? Okay, are you going hungry? Do you lack money? In reality, do you need money? Is the project too big for you in reality? So why are you panicking? If in reality everything is well, I've learned, child of God, to depend on what my father says, to believe the report of the Lord and not the report of my eyes or my situation. And that has given me so much rest in my life. I inquire of the Lord. I say, Father, what are you saying concerning this situation? And once he gives me a word, I hang on to it for dear life. Hang on to it for dear life. I shared a couple of weeks ago that I was going to preach somewhere and I received 
a, a, a word that my daughter was in trouble. It was the type of message that can make you pick up papers, like Bagbon and So like, no. Let me clean. It was just a bad message. And the devil provided evidence. You see, because the devil gets serious. Provided evidence. They sent me a voice note where she was talking. How do you deny that? Because now it's not yeah, hearing from the friends. You heard she was using her mouth. It's her voice. You gave birth to her. You know the voice. This is my daughter speaking here. And it, quickly, the Holy Spirit said to me, what did I say about her this morning? Did I not say she will not die? She will live. So why would you be bothered? I, you know, Bazalan, where I was preaching, she can tell you, I was happy. I was not faking it. I was, I was happy like I've never given birth. <laughs> to, I was happy. I was, I was happy. I was rejoicing. This side, death is looming. I'm like, not according to reality. I've already heard and seen that all that's happening here is not important because in reality, it can't happen. It cannot happen. And because of that, the, this reality had to align. It had to align. I don't know. I have so many of those testimonies where I just believe what God has said and I walk according to what God has said. And then before long, these things shall follow you. These signs shall follow you. Just continue in your assignment. So I said we received that breakthrough. Um, the church we have signed, I think we're going to talk about that at the end of the service. We have signed, so that's a miracle. We have our property. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> Okay, so that's that. And then we almost immediately, I think, yeah, the same week, we then get, it's not even tenants, because it's, it's like guest house, not rental, guest house, daily payments, but it's still for over a year. So that's crazy. That's now ridiculous. That's like, what? So I'm excited. I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I knew you. I, I knew you were going to do this. I'm so excited. And the Holy Spirit is like, why do you think this is about you? Aren't you paying off a church? I did this at this time. It's not a coincidence. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> Fancy me rejoicing. It's a breakthrough. He's like, yes, it's my breakthrough. It's my breakthrough. Amen. Child of God, what if I didn't hear? So when I heard that, first of all, what if I, if I was not, you know how I heard? I was praying. I didn't hear it. I know you can hear when you're not praying, but I heard this one when we were in prayer. Then God was able to, and then, now I know how to anchor, literally anchor my breakthrough to the ground. It's not going to fly away because it's money with purpose. It already has an assignment. And we've already covenanted with God. Because out of this money, this is yours. Yes. We've already entered into it. So now, even if those people wanted to change their minds, they can't. It's late because now it's God's money. It's now God's money. So that money is now fortified. No one can take it away from me because it belongs to God. But I had to exercise myself in godliness. Stop. Stop this business of not praying. But you want to live a Christian life. But you want to be a casual believer who comes to church for 30 minutes. You're getting irritated because time. Time. Did they see what time it is? Yes, we saw. And God also saw when he was Gittering us here. Engage God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 14. 
1 Corinthians 14, the Bible says from verse 14, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with understanding. I will sing in the spirit. I will also sing with understanding. Okay, verse 14 says, for if I pray with a tongue and then later the next verse substitutes tongue for what? Spirit. So when we say sing in the spirit, what are we saying? We're saying sing in tongues because according to the scripture, the synonym The word that replaces tongue is spirit. Amen. So according to the word of God, when we pray in tongues, our minds are unfruitful. They don't understand. But it's good because I'm speaking mysteries with the Father. What am I doing? I'm training myself to bypass my natural mind. When I, tra when I pray in the spirit, my mind is not grasping anything. But I'm waiting to hear what the Father is saying. I'm training my mind to be familiar with things that don't make sense in the mind. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you are praying, you are in the gym, training camp, even coming to church like this, hearing this word, training camp. Your mind is getting recalibrated. You are understanding better. You are, you, you, if you are engaging with the word, you are now planning. This is what I'm changing. This is what I won't do. These are the declarations I'll be making. I'm buying passes and this book. I'm buying passes and this book. I am buying passes and this book. <laughs> Guys, the book, the book has declarations. It's at the back. <laughs> it's at the back. So you want, you want to declare, you want to learn how to consistently declare the word of God. Buy books. Buy books. Just do whatever you need to do, but get it right. The Bible says your mind is unfruitful, but the spirit prays. You are exercising yourself in godliness. You are training yourself to what? To live a godly life. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, passage of scripture that I love, it says now Jer Jericho was straightly shut up on account of the Israelites. It's verse 2 that I want. It's verse 2 that I want. Okay. And the Lord said, okay, let's read verse 1 as well. Let's do 1 and 2. Verse 1, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went in and none came in. So this is a place that's, that's closed on account of the Israelites. The reason that we've locked it up so securely is because we don't want you to gain entry. It's about you. I don't know about you, but there are so many things that I've seen where I can see that, ah, the enemy just doesn't want a child of God on that mountain. Like he's just fighting or he's, he's keeping me out of riches. So when I'm trying business, everything fails. I'm trying, it's like, it's my Jericho that straightly shut up on account of Zandi. It's like I'm trying this, but it's like there are walls that are erected. Every time I try to step into this, something comes up to block it. That's what the Bible says, that the children of Israelites were outside of Jericho and could not go in. Okay, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, the king thereof, and the mighty man of valor. See. So while he is outside, thinking he cannot gain entry, there is a way for him to gain entry. He must choose to see what God is saying. See, I have given you, he speaks in the past tense. Do you understand that you are standing outside and instead of God saying, I will give you, he says, no, I need you to see that I have already given you. I've given into thine hand the king of Jericho. I've given into thine hand the mighty man of valor. I've given into thy hand Jericho itself. It now belongs to you, but you're outside. Can you imagine the superiority complex you will have if you believe the word of the Lord? While the enemy is trying to molest you, while he's coming against you, you'll just be there saying, uh, sorry, but you don't know me. We don't know each other like that. Please don't talk to me. While he's saying you're sick, you're like, it's not possible. There was a, a pastor brother friend of ours who was, I don't think we've ever seen anyone more sick. Like sick. He had 
actually been saved. He was very, very sick. He was on life support. And I think that said four days. In four days, he'll be gone. And he says he doesn't understand how it happened because he had already done his, um, his will, all of that. His parents were there to say goodbye because he was in Joburg. He's from Eswatini, but he was in Joburg at a hospital here. And it was over in that time, while he was unconscious, he says in his own consciousness, he just said, God, if you can save me, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. He was a very smart boy, busy with, he was, what had he done, boy engineering, whatever, I don't know. But anyway, long story cut short, God did it for him. That's why he stopped everything, stopped working, like secular job. As soon as he rose out of the cause, it was a miracle. The doctors couldn't believe it. No one could believe it. And he rose from there and started serving God. And periodically, the attacks on his body would come. There was a year that we were looking at him and we we're like, no, this is not okay. He had growths and blisters. He was, he looked, he looked like he could just drop dead. Like this person, I don't know why you're not in a hospital on tubes and you're not okay. And I remember talking to him because at some point he got so sick that he was, he didn't want to go to hospital. So he was home and we were told that he's home. And I went to see him in his house and he was telling me that, okay, now I actually feel myself like lose my mind. Like I can, when I lose my mind, cause also he started, you know, um, struggling, hallucinating and things like that. He'd be like, I can see this is, and I'm like, okay, shouldn't we? And I'm coming to natural things. I'm like, you know what, Buddy? I know, you know, God is faithful and all of that. And I know he is. I'm just saying right now, there's other things that he's given us that we can do. Shouldn't we be do? And he laughed. He's like, anything can take me in this world except sickness. He's like, you must never worry about me. The guy was sick, Basalan. He said, anything can take me except sickness. He was like, I'm too high for that thing. I'm too high for sickness. Do you know that guy? That, but you see, the light he was walking in. You can train to where there are certain things that don't know how to touch you. When you have enough light in that area, it doesn't, it can't gain and it just can't find you. It can find the one right next to you and it will not come near you. Because you've seen in the word of God reality about you. You agree with God. He says, see, I've already given unto you. And then immediately you are superior. Immediately. Some of you are stressed out for no reason at all. This is what the father said to me. He said, tell my people to stop thinking they're unemployed. Stop seeing unemployment. Stop, stop sitting and saying, I'm just waiting to get a job. What, what prince is walking the streets like that? How are you a son of God? You're a king, you're a God. And you're like, I'm unemployed. What are you even talking about? It's not even possible. First of all, you are in partnership. You are a co-worker. That's what the Bible calls you. A co-worker with Christ. If I'm working here, not just preaching here, there are many people whose lives I save every day. People that I interact with, I call them, I pray with them. You know, they, they storm my house at any odd hour. All sorts of things happen. I'm working. I'm a co-worker. I'm doing what my father is doing. Who owes me a salary? My father will pay. He's not an, a, a wicked God. He's going to pay me and pay me well. So I can't be unemployed. Even if it looks like I'm unemployed in this realm, vele, even when I'm working there, I'm not working for you. I'm representing him there. Yes. Don't be confused and start thinking I'm like one of your other employees. I understand I walk in a certain light. So I don't know how to be intimidated and bullied by a natural boss. Because I know that the steps of the righteous are all 
ordered by God. If I'm finding myself in this workspace, it's because my father has ordered my steps. So when you say you are firing me, I look not at things which are seen, but I do look at things which are unseen. And I'm like, in the world of the unseen, is it time up here? If it's not time up, I go to my room, I close the door, I'm a king. I take my chair, I sit down, and I scatter your wickedness. I'll destroy you, I will dethrone you from that position where you thought you were a boss. I'm going to chop the legs from under your chair, and you are going to land with a thud because it's my workplace, and it's not time for me to leave. So I refuse. I am not going to because it's my father who ordered my steps. So you can't tell me it's time up. I'll just check. I look at what is unseen. Because the things that are seen are permanent. The ones that are seen are temporal. Once I see that it's not yet time, I'll scatter you. I'll finish with you while smiling. I'm here smiling at you like this. But in my heart, I'm like, hey. I'm going home to my bedroom. I'm just smiling at you, but I know what I'll do. I will deal with you as soon as I'm behind closed doors. Because I have authority. I have authority. I can make you lose that job. You better be nice to me. Don't think because you're senior to me, you are senior to me. Just because you look like you're senior, never assume you're actually senior. It's a child of God who is senior. The one who walks in authority, the authority of understanding. Let's read quickly um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 14. We're going to pray. This is the last scripture in Jesus' name. Matthew 5, 13 to 14. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I'll read. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. This is too powerful. You are the salt of the world. So this is Jesus speaking. He's telling us, you are the salt. You are the salt. Then he says, the problem is when salt loses its saltiness. It's not good for nothing. What does it look like to lose our saltiness? When I lose my saltiness, I cry about the things that other people are crying about. Where I'm supposed to be the answer, I become part of the problem. I've lost my saltiness. What will happen to the community when the child of God is also struggling the same way they're struggling? When they cry, whoa, what are we going to do? You are also like, well, we are salt that has lost its saltiness. What are you fit for? You are crying where they are crying. Why aren't you saying Jesus lives? There is a balm in Gilead. There is a balm in Gilead. Why aren't you the one who is saying, I am a life-giving spirit. Give me that situation. There is grace that is sufficient in me. I'm more than equal to the task. I can do all things through Christ because he strengthens me. When salt loses its saltiness, then what? You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. Light cannot be hidden cannot be placed under a bushel. It must be put on a pedestal and light up everywhere. Child of God, you are here to light up. Light up the world with your superiority complex, with your superior living. Light it up. That's what you are here for. You're not here to be frustrated and molested. He says, I speak to you fathers because you have known me. I speak to you sons because you have overcome the world. You have already overcome, son of God. You have already overcome. If you can just exercise yourself in godliness. You know, I read 1 Timothy 4 verse 7. But verse 8, we didn't read. Verse 8 then says, exercise, a bodily exercise profits a little. But exercise in godliness profits in all things. 
So if we're saying we're in a training camp, when you, when you focus on that, it's going to benefit you in every area. In every area, even in the area, it shouldn't be benefiting you. Oh, I don't know. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Even in the area that you decided to go that way, you know, because you are exercising yourself in godliness, you have dominion even in these other areas where you wanted natural light to give light. Do you understand? The light of the word of God, of the truth of his word, is too superior. It can solve your problem of unemployment. It can solve what you think is divorce. It can solve your problem of feeling disadvantaged, your problem of feeling like you lack. You lack nothing. You lack no good thing. That's what the word of God says. But you think you do, so you do. Proverbs 23, verse 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As long as you think you have this real problem and it's, it's a big problem, I, it's serious, Pastor Zand. Yes, you have a serious problem. Your problem is ignorance. Your real problem is that you don't know the truth. John chapter 8, verse 31. If you continue in my word, you shall be my disciples. You shall, you shall then verse 32, you, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth that you now know shall what? Set you free. First, you must continue in his word. You can't go to the gym once a week. Oh, is it okay, Kai? Oh, Picalton. Is it okay for us to go to the gym once a week, auntie? Okay, two. At least four. Yeah, at least four times. Here, we come once a week, right? It's not good enough. So what are you doing the other times? Because you need to be infused with the word of God, the same word. A minimum, they say four times, I say daily. Men cannot live by bread alone. You eat daily, but also, I've never heard you complain that I ate in the morning, but now they're saying I must have lunch. <laughs> why, why must we eat supper? Every day we must just be eating. We ate breakfast, now we're eating lunch. Now I can eat supper. No, you even complain when you can't see the food. You want to eat many times. It's, you need the same amount. You teach yourself to be just listening to the word of God. Especially these sermons that we preach here. So, because then when you come next week, you see, if you live here and you go and listen to Noel Jones, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Because there is a certain diet that brings certain results. It's not everything that's food. That's, that's, that's what you need. And God has given you shepherds after his own heart. Who are feeding you what you need. Their circumstances are very different. Do you understand what I'm saying? And also for continuity. So that when you come and we teach the word of God, you actually understand because you're building up from what we said the last time we spoke. So stop busying yourself with preachers you don't even know. Stop it. Listen to your, go back to Facebook, listen to the someone that the apostle preached, listen to this, listen to everything that we preach, and then listen differently. Listen and engage. I'm going to say training can play. Write notes. Write notes while you're listening. Write notes, write notes, write notes, you know, and then begin to speak it. There are things that I say here. I say, I cannot fail. I can never be stranded. In fact, I can never be disadvantaged. I'm moving on. I'm constantly strong. I'm moving forward. I'm moving upwards only all the time. When I declare that, I'm declaring it and it's impacting my life. What about you? Because you are listening to me. Did I make the declaration for you? No. Which means when you are listening at home, you're supposed to be saying everything I'm saying. In fact, when I'm preaching here, it's not supposed to be this quiet. Because when I say, I'm born from above, you're supposed to be saying, I'm born from above. I'm above all. I'm above all. You are taking it by force. You are engaging the word by force. And as you engage the word like that, 
it is established in your life. Because while I'm preaching, I'm establishing it in my life, not in your life. When the apostle is preaching, I'm here speaking in tongues. You've seen me. When he makes a declaration, I'm here on his heels. Once he says it, I'm, I've said it as well. It's, yes, it's my portion, Lord. That's me as well. I'm right there. I'm right there. Because I'm engaging the word. You have to actively engage. Train yourself for this godly life. Teach, you see, taking offense is easy. It's a natural thing. But you can train yourself to never take offense. There are scriptures you can meditate until no matter who says what, they can't get you. It's too late. You have disappeared. The one who lives is Christ. So you're not quick to take offense. And they've, they've done it for real. They said it for real. But like, I'm going why would she say that? It's good like, ah, I don't know. You just, you're okay. You release it. And people are like, oh, Pastor Zanzi, but unrealistic. Well, if reality is this realm, we are unrealistic. Because we've chosen to be subject to another reality. Choose it. Live with your kids, not according to where they are now. According to what you saw. Declare the end from the beginning. You're a man of God. You are anointed for your generation. The anointing of God is awesome on your life. There are nations who are waiting for you to quench their thirst. You are the one God has chosen for our generation. That time that person is going that way. <laughs> but you don't walk according to what you see. You are a child of God. You don't speak according to what you see. Some of you are saying you're unemployed. Some of you are saying you lack. It's all because you are not seeing correctly. Some of you are saying, I'm so depressed. I'm so frustrated because you're not seeing correctly. There's where you can see and then you're like, how? I'm not even depressed. The Bible says when we believe the word, we then enter into rest. Once we mix the word with faith. So the day I mix the word with faith that it is well with my marriage, I enter into a marriage of rest. Now, in the natural realm, he can communicate different. He can try to communicate that there's trouble in paradise. Communicate what you want. I don't live there. It is well. And before long, everything in the natural will align with the reality that I've chosen to align myself with. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is the cheapest way to a colorful life. Cheapest, easiest. This is cheap. What I've just given you, very cheap. But it will make you live an expensive life. People will look at you and say, ah, how? It's cheap. We believe the word. We live according to, we rejoice. Last scripture, I know I said last, but pastors normally say three times. This is my second one. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, as we stand to pray. Let's stand so that I feel guilty if I take long. Let's stand, Bazalan. Philippians 3, verse 3, just put it up for us. It says, for we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus, and we have no confidence in the flesh. We are the circumcision. We worship God in the spirit. We rejoice in Christ Jesus. We have absolutely no confidence in the flesh. What is the flesh? It's anything you can see. It's anything you can touch. It's anything. So if my flesh says, you are tired, you can't go on, I check from another place. Am I tired? There's a realm where I understand that I'm not tired. I don't know how many times I've preached here when my flesh has said, you are so sick. If you try to preach, you'll faint and you'll embarrass yourself in front of everyone. The guys who help me, protocol, they know. You know, there'll be times, even they will know, because ah, maybe today is not the day. And I'll be like, the devil can't tell me when to preach and when not to preach. The Bible says to preach in and out of season. So if I'm preaching by the Spirit, the Spirit will carry this body until that sermon is done. I have my natural limit. See, when I've pushed up to here, then it's over. Then there's another one that comes from seeing. I'll know that I'm supposed to be, it's over, and I'll be like, but it's not over because I'm a super being. I can do more. Let's do three more laps. I remember going to preach for... Apostle Figil. Yo, Apostle Figil. And she sometimes watches this, so she might see this. 
Hey, she's a slave driver, that woman of God. You preach until there's no more preach. Like you preach every sermon you preach. And it's like you, in one day you do four or five sessions. Like you're there preaching. This crowd moves out, another crowd comes in. And she's a big church. By the Spirit, I can do all things through Christ. His grace is sufficient. You know, when you finish, you're like, only God. It, there's no way. That was the hand of God. So then you learn that, ah, I have more capacity than what I know and think. I can do more. Let's go further. Let's love people harder. Because you thought, this is it, I can't. Pella, even everyone knows what this man did to me or what this woman did. It's over, it ends here. You'd be surprised that it's just the beginning. If you'd look correctly and see your future. We were at the verge of divorce, but are you divorcing? In that realm, is this a divorce? Because if in that realm, it's not a divorce, then stop paying attention to this thing. Go and hide somewhere and focus on what's happening there. Before long, everything will come up to your level and align. I'm not telling stories. This is how I live my life. Refusing to believe what I see every day. I just refuse. I don't, I walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. I refuse. I refuse the report of the enemy. When the enemy says there's a casting down, I say, no, there's a lifting. And I use my mouth to say it. I don't say it in my heart. Please stop with these prayers from your heart. Stop this thing. It's been doesn't lead you in. Ah. We pray with our mouth. Read Romans chapter 10. Open your mouth and let your voice be heard. Stop praying in your heart. Pray with your mouth. Open your mouth and decree and declare certain things. Frame your world. Rearrange things with the words of your mouth. It's like when we say, let's pray in tongues. Then you're waiting for something to come so you can pray in tongues. It's not coming. The thing you're waiting for is not coming. You must just start praying in tongues. When we say sing in the spirit, we're saying sing in tongues. You're, we're going to be singing a lot in tongues in this church. So if, you're, if you don't familiarize, you know what I would do if I were you? I'd practice at home. Just when you're in the house, just start, start any melody. Like just, because the Bible says, I will pray in the spirit and I will pray also with my understanding. Then it says, I will sing in the spirit and I will also sing with my understanding. So we can't be spending all the time singing with our understanding. Since a training camp, things must change. The reason we're being trained like this is because we're being dispatched, we're being deployed to crazy assignment in our spheres of influence. So catch up. In Jesus' name, catch up. Awaken, arise. Stop telling yourself that you are young. The prayer is for old people. Now, when I was, was a lad, when I was 13, I was in Bible school, nine hours a week in a city that was far from my house. I was praying all night, not once a week, several times a week. All night, not the all night prayer that has keyboards. Not the all night prayer that has preachers punctuating the prayer. The one that's just prayer, 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 until morning. But I was a teenager and that shaped my destiny. Today I'm standing here, I'm saying I've been married 30 years. My children are abroad. You have these fancy stories to tell. It's not a coincidence. You engage actively and you don't wait. Don't tell yourself you are young. This is for the young people. Stop, stop. There's no faith for a child. You are an ancient spirit. You are a giant. Choose to separate yourself. A lot of teenagers don't want to pray for many hours. Don't be like them. Hang out with people who are praying. You'll pray a lot. Hang out with people. Bazalan, this is a word, a now word. God is talking to you where you are. And God is saying, stop bothering pastors. 
asking them to do for you what they can't do for you. Some of the things you want us to do, we love you, but we can't do it. Because you are asking me to chew for you and swallow for you. If I chew and swallow, it will benefit me. Because you always want to come to me. There's a problem. Yes, I love you. I love you. Please come. I'll pray with you. But can you engage God for yourself? Go, just as I was saying, I was saying, I was saying, I was for seven days. For seven days. If you want, you can stop eating, ne? eating natural food and only eat the word. That's a true fast. So when it's a time for you to have breakfast, fetch a sermon and a notebook. Listen to the sermon. You're praying in tongues, you're writing notes, you're engaging. Again, lunchtime. When it's time for you to eat food, go and fetch other food. And just seven days, let's see if the th mountain that you think is big will not move. It's just waiting for you to engage. This is a training camp. You can't keep just wanting laying of hands. It helps but a little. It, it profits you a little. You must exercise yourself in godliness. Learn to pray, learn to eat the word, learn to meditate the word, and most importantly, learn to speak the word. Because meditation has a connotation of muttering. Speak the word. You have not meditated until you have spoken. Chew the card. You've listened to the word. What have you done about it after? What were you saying? Like, what were you just? Speak it. Hallelujah. Let's welcome the apostle to pray for us and pray over this word. What a word. Come on, let's just put our hands together and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Zandi won't eat for you, won't chew for you, won't swallow for you. Every word that has been taught, take it in, take it in yourself. We are going out to make sure that we go back to all the sermons listen to the sermons and take time to fast and pray and our lives will be different let us pray father we thank you thank you for speaking to us in this manner we appreciate every word we appreciate every rebuke and father we accept responsibility for all the instructions given to us thank you for the training that you have ushered us into. And Father, we know that after today, our lives are going to be different. Thank you for those who came here down in their spirit, down in their lives, in their prayer lives, in the word, that a lifting has come to them. Refreshing has come to them. Thank you, Father, <laughs> that your cities are built through prosperity. We declare that the people are prospering from today onwards in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks for everything. And everyone say amen. amen. Shout aloud, amen. amen. Okay, shout a glorious amen. amen. Praise God. You can take your seats. We just want to do some other business before you guys leave. Amen. Hey, Bazalwan. Um, I'm going to go quickly to announcements. Um, we have our... All right. Do we have our... Do we have first-time visitors? First-time visitors? Just wave. Uh, we can do better, Bazalwan. I'm happy for you. You came at the right time. Uh, had a divine appointment with the Lord. After the service, just occupy the front seats. The leadership of the church would like to uh, just meet you. Amen. Okay. Um, Bazalani, we have our morning prayers every day from 4 a.m. Uh, on the Zoom platform. And the um, uh, Monday to Friday breakfast prayers at Apostle Peggy and Pastor Zandi's home from 8 to 9, 
And on Tuesdays, we have Bible study. Wednesday, we have corporate fasting every Wednesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, Thursdays, there's deliverance sessions with, with the apostle at their home. Please book Bazalwane, uh, make an appointment. Don't just show up. And then we have home sales um, every Thursday from half past six. And there is youth service on Fridays uh, here for now uh, from half past four um, till late. And Barcelona, the fire conference is coming soon. And there will be a need for team leaders who will manage different departments in preparation and during the course of the event. So we are therefore, Basada, requested to avail ourselves uh, for serving in this regard. The different departments, I'm sure maybe in due course by next week, there will be a clearer announcement on what needs to be done so that we can serve. We are partners, Basala, Nangit. Angit, Basala, Amen. Okay. Basala, we are reminded of our annual uh, conference and church project pledges. Um, it's going to be an annual once of contribution from 20 grand, 15 grand, 10, 5 towards our church pro, uh, projects for the year. Please just confirm with Pastor Zandi uh, the amount that you will contribute. Amen. Amen. Hey, I confirm on Bazalwan. I'm going to use Oh, so I tell you offering. Oh, so you understand that this is a food is the offering. Amen. 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 Okay, so please we are reminded to sign a register at the back. Um, so I'm going to be very quick. We are going to take your offering. Can the ushers come uh, forward? Um, if it, the word that was in my heart is in Ecclesiastes chapter 11. You know, it talks about casting your bread on the water. It's a lot of. Um, uh, verses, you know, talks about planting in the morning a seed and then also in the evening, you know, because you don't know which one will sprout and who knows, both of them might sprout. So, Basalwana, I'm not going to go into reading them. It's Ecclesiastes 11. What's in my heart, just to encourage us, Basalwana, is that let us look at every opportunity to plant seeds. Like there is a, when we give offerings, we are planting seeds. When we give to our fellow brothers and sisters, we are planting seeds. And when we're giving to the pledges, Bazalwan, those are the seeds we are planting. And then Awazi, Uguti Hau, Lesitilengi Plantayo, oh, Pap Matlang Utulan, when I first came here, he read a very profound passage of scripture. I never forgot it, where he said, you know, you plant a seed, and God dis God names it. Uguti, this seed is a sprouter, ibe this thing in your life. When no one unet divine protection in your life, ours would there is a seed that you planted, Bazalwan. So I'm just encouraging us, let us Take out the pledges, Bazalwan. Let us, like when you read Ecclesiastes, there's a part that says, when you watch the wind, you won't sow. When you watch the clouds, you won't reap. So that talks to our circumstances. We don't give because we have. So if you look at what you have and then you say, I'll plant when I have more money. No, we plant despite the direction of the wind. We plant Bazalwan and we expect, like the reaping, it's when you have an expectation. It doesn't matter our circumstances around us. You know, Bazalwan, in my heart, um, I had a testimony I wanted to give, but because it's cut. But long story short, Bazalwan, God is faithful. When you plant seeds, it's not in vain. You find yourself. Living in Pilo Bonga Tabangu, we afford, are we affording a la mesho? And I remember I had a conversation with, with my colleague, we are in the same position. So, more or, more or less, she knows how much we are earning, you know? And she was like, can't you see when you say Benzapi? You know? Can't you say Benzapi? Because, I mean, we are in the same position, but like we were talking, good morning, yeah, humble. Because I just be a Cape Town. They said Cape Town, Bazalwani, last week. 
on holiday a vacay vacation and our ninja and best at lifting bazalan best in a salon and the best is at lifting if if you know as a clifton google a property value is in the set lifting best in a salon of one bedroom so get two bedroom apartment facing the sea ne bazalan i'm not flexing i'm encouraging you ne so we were there and my colleague was like house is nil ganja nita kese nga loksis se a plena se a hamba september uk we are thinking let us tour se a so tour a so tour you wanna tour in europe ne that's me planning i'm not bazalone i've learned you know when i came here i remember ubo ngat yeah we buy without money i know that scripture ne go isaiah and i was like okay how you know but I learned the secret Bazalwan plant seeds keep planting the seeds Bazalwan and what seems impossible one day uzomangala mnangi amangala Bazalwan besiphila enye high life and I was saying unkulunkulu wouldn't let us taste it if that's not what he has destined for us and unkulunkulu wouldn't let my children be exposed to that opulence if that is not what he has destined for us so i've decided and i've made up my mind i will keep on planting seeds and i will keep on planting seeds let's keep on planting seeds bazalwan it works wonders i promise you oh, okay yeah. if you don't believe me watch this space Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Father, we just thank you for, for the privilege of worshiping you with our substance. Thank you for the offering that has been given today. We speak your blessing over each and every one of your children who have chosen to be faithful, to be practitioners of your word. Thank you for increase. That is their portion in the mighty and precious name of Jesus that they are distinguished in the earth that they multiply because they choose not to withhold from you. Thank you, Father, that it is so. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Um, so, Bazalane, we already announced that we've signed for the church building the property. It's been signed over to us. We have six months left to raise the money that we need to have paid it in full. Uh, basically, they are asking for a very small amount of 217000 every month for six months. Can I hear an amen? amen. Um, so depending on your faith, that sounded like a huge amount, but it really isn't. Okay. So God has his own champions, Bazalan, for the exercise. Remember when David went out? And there were all these people who were trained, and David hit Goliath with a stone. After he had been menacing the armies of God, you know, for so long. There are, there are some of us, and I count myself amongst those people, who are champions. Everyone here must give. Uh, Pastor Nosi is going to be coming because God gave her a word concerning this. So I think next week, Sunday, please try to be in church so that you can hear what God is saying about the privilege that we have, how it will shift your life. Just the opportunity to build God's house. Do you know what that means for you as an, as an, as an individual? Like, this is fertile ground you want to sow your seed. So she's going to come and share on that. But um, we, we have people who already know that, Shem, I'm part of those and I'm going to invite those to remain behind and just, it's people who are going to also brainstorm with, a, like, how are we tackling this elephant? It's an elephant, it looks big, it really isn't big. If God gives you the structure for this is what, he'll give you the structure, this is the strategy we're going to use, and then he's going to give someone else the tools this is, these are the, the tools that we're going to use to cut this thing down. And he's going to give someone else, you know, the equipment for how we're we carrying it to where it needs to go. But all of us have a role to play. All of us have money that we should give, not, not the money we're used to giving. I want you to prayerfully consider. And I was thinking about it. I was like, Lord, I already, what I do, Bazalan, as your pastor, if we say, like we have said this year, that there's, um, we want people to take care of conferences and all of that, 20,000 contribution, 10,000, 15,000, whatever. As your pastor, I believe in leading by example. So if there are people who are giving there, I'll be like, okay, I have to give there. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you already have this pledge that you've done. And now it's like, uh, now it's about 217,000. What I understand is that God gives seed to the sower. So once my heart says yes to sowing, and in partnership with the Holy Spirit, I can say, I, I will take care of this amount. It's not because I, the money is in an account, or it's because he gives seed to the sower. Even as I commit myself, he gives me grace, and he gives me the seed that I need. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm inviting you all, Bazalani. This is in 1st of July, is it? We're moving into the premises. 1st of July, Bazalani. We are going to our place. And 1st of July, we'll be moving into that place. But there's those of us who just really need to make this happen. I'm just going to invite you, if you really feel a burden, I know that some of you already approached me and said, concerning the building project, that's my burden. Then there's others, 
you've been quiet about it, but it's in your heart. Please just remain for a few minutes after church. Let's talk. And then by next week, we'll be saying to everyone, this is the strategy we want to use. This is how we'll be giving as a church. Maybe, I don't know, the men will raise X amount, the women, will, whatever. I don't know what we're going to come up with. But we're paying off that building. Look, Salah. We are paying it off in six months or less. We're paying it off. Do you know when we bought the building, and I'm going to share this because the camera is now off. Is it? Oh, it's not. It's still on. Okay. Even though it's on, it's fine. Um, when we bought the land, we bought it for 650, was it? I think 70 or even 80% of that money came from an individual. They didn't pay it at once. They paid it over months. But there was one individual who was paying. I'm saying, this money that we think is a lot, one of you here, God can just give you the money. I mean, if God gave me all of that, Shem, I wouldn't even run an announcement. Because I know what it will do for me to release that money. So I'm just there where I'm like, Lord, what's the maximum you want to give through me? Because I know it secures my future and the future of my children and their children, you know? So um, I'm just saying that as we champion this, don't feel like if Pastor Zandi says she's giving 100,000, I think I'll do 100. I'm doing now 500, meaning now 120. I'm giving 100 and leaving 20 for myself. If you have 500,000, Pella, give 300 at least. Don't give like me. Give according to your ability. Give according to what God Quickens and also according to how much he has entrusted you with. Amen. Amen. So we're going to remain behind just for a few minutes. We'll occupy this seat here. Our first time visitors will occupy these seats. And we're going to deal with that. Quickly, Chantel, please come. Um, so we all know that last week, Minister Luanda Bera Valelis, she said goodbye. She relocated. And we have a new church admin person. Chantal, Mashele. Um, yes. So the reason I'm introducing her is because um, you cannot keep bothering Luanda. She's gone. That's number one. Secondly, also, if you need something now that with regards to church, whether it's the appointments on Thursday, appointments, with whatever it is you need, I wanted you to put a face to the name of our new church administrator. Amen. Thank you. Share the grace. Okay, let's stand to share the grace. Church is over, Bazalan. Amen. Thank you, Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of